Good morning. Today is July 17th, 2021. I stopped at a local nursery yesterday for some fall veggie starters and I came home with a bunch of flowers. So, and grasses and decorative corn because I had to. And now I am replanting the back garden for, I think, the third time this season. And I trust it will be epic. So these, I just, these started the whole downfall of my shopping trip because I've never seen these before. These are called Aloha. They are a uh, coneflower rudbeckia hybrid and the most gorgeous shade of apricot, golden, golden apricot peach. And then they had these, these are the Summerina yellow, um, <clears throat> which look very close to my other rudbeckias over here. So I had to do that since they are my favorite. I did fall in love with them. And then the purple here, this is a blue speedwell. Should get um, like two and a half feet tall or so. And I wanted to replace this salvia because it's just not like giving much. And then of course the Mardi Gras from the other day. But look, look, and then the corn. I might need to move this corn. Look what happens to the corn. This is the wild, or I keep calling it wild sage. I don't know why. This is the Russian sage. And this is, I actually planted this a couple years ago, but it, it didn't do too well. Look what happens when this uh, is in the light. Uh, what? Try not to step on the watermelons here. But do you see this gorgeousness? So this will be about five feet tall. So I kind of need, I need to put it somewhere toward the back and preferably with, let me show you this one again. Oh, good Lord. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? If this isn't just the most stunning little situation here. So after like nine years of working on the garden, I feel like I'm really starting to hone in and figure out what works and what I what I'd like the most. And again, this year, no brainer. And like, look at these two together. The purple on this they call it yellow again, but to me it's much more orange. And then this gorgeous grass. This is red rooster carex. So I already, I didn't plant it yet, but I pot it down in here where the, uh, I just did again, wild sage, it's Russian sage. I gotta look into growing that because it never did much last year and it's not doing anything this year either. So maybe it needs different conditions. To be fair, it was also very tight back here, but so I have this and then these salvia, the Wendy's Wish, um, are going through some trauma with the transplant, but once they settle in, they'll have these absolutely gorgeous conical flowers in this like magenta color which I thought would be really nice little combo over here with the grass lavender I'm going to be moving up front where I have some other lavender and I really should get that beetle before look at the colors of that 110% oh. I will be growing that next year if you know the name off the top of your head you can leave it in the comments comments um Otherwise, I'll try to remember to put it in there. I, I, I think it was something with a J. I forget now, but 
um, it's one that if you're, you know, somewhat knowledgeable should be able to be grown um, ornamentally and easily. But look at the striations. Is that not the most gorgeous thing you ever saw? So. Yeah, here we go again. And oh, maybe I would maybe I'll move that lavender over there. It's it's just been so so dry here and oh, or maybe I'll put it right there. I'll have to get some of this stuff in here and see. So, I'm going to have to be pulling some stuff out. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it, but um I just really want stuff that packs a punch and I I I really want it to be viewable from the house and a lot of these smaller plants just don't make the cut like the salvia this has, been, has like a tiny little blue and that'll eventually get there but um not compared to this so yeah shout out to JT my buddy For sharing the grass obsession with me. So we'll see how this does. I have a feeling I'll be adding a lot more in the future. Um, I actually let some grass, quote, weeds, end quote, um, remain up front around our light post where there's a clematis and irises surrounding it. I just one the like neighbor's dog pee on it and so I don't really want to I don't want to be in there digging around and pulling weeds out um <clears throat> but two I loved how it looked I thought it looked really elegant and three by the time the <clears throat> by the time the grass had put on a nice bit of height and shape the clematis was just outrageous, and I didn't want to disrupt the roots of the clematis, so lots of experimenting as usual, and yeah, thanks for joining, and I hope, I hope you're finding this fun and helpful and, I don't know, a nice little respite from the crazy world we live in. Look how gorgeous this is. I just... I really need to get an actual camera and stop using my cell phone. I think that's, I think it's time, right? I have no idea where to start. If anyone has any suggestions on that, I am all ears. Or just stay low. Okay, more later, hopefully. Stunning, right? Again, these are the um, Hellenium Mardi Gras, and they should put on, hopefully, like another, I don't know, eight inches, maybe? 10 inches? And this is this gorgeous Anis Hyssop. Oh, let me show you this, too, if I can. The cut leaf cone flower the, with the green center here, this tall one. It's hard to get this on camera, I guess. Yeah, these finally started blooming, but if you can see that spike right there, that is the giant purple hyssop, which is living up to its name. So very, very happy. A little, a little tight back here. I really need to spread everything out by a good foot on either side, but I don't know how to do that at this point because everything's pretty established, but Sometimes you have to do things in gardening that are a little uncomfortable. And the burning star liatris, or blazing star liatris. So again, this garden um, doesn't really peak until like August, September. And I think as in, like newer gardeners, for myself at least, I live under the impression that summer is still around the school schedule. So summer starts in May and then 
summer ends in August when the school starts again for kids. But the truth is summer, summers ends on, I think September 22nd. So, um, yeah, so <clears throat> August even is only halfway there. And now with climate change, there's, for I guess most people, a pretty extended season in addition to that because it's just so hot. And we, it was hot enough that I don't, I don't know about last year, but the year prior, I was still picking, I picked my last round of tomatoes at um, the end of October, on Halloween actually. So October 31st, I in Pennsylvania, Northeast, um, or Southeast Pennsylvania, I was, yeah, harvesting tomatoes while getting ready for Halloween. Can you see? this happening oh my god let me just move this over here real quick i really thought i was going to be all caught up in may this year and then i really thought i was going to be all caught up in june this year and then well it's mid-july and I'm, i guess i'm pretty close but There's just something really, really healing about letting your body absorb what happens when you're next to these gorgeous, gorgeous beings. The, can you see like this purple from the, it's so hard to get on camera here. Here it is, a little bit. The purple of the verbena with the grass behind it, this reddish. Oh, it's so pretty. So I think I did mention in the prior video, the one that has the rudbeckia up front with the two types of coneflower, the raspberry and the standard purple echinacea that that combination, I could live with that, I think, just by itself. I'd have to have some, some zinnias also, obviously, but that just really did it for me this year. It, and it's simple, native, I think, and um, low maintenance. The coneflower I watered once, I think, all season. So, Trying to make things a bit, a bit easier and a bit more simple. And it's hard to know when you're starting out, especially if you haven't experienced the plants before in person and seen what the life cycle is and, um, you know, seen how they, how they manage in your own environment because it's all it's so different depending on where you are and what your climate is and if you get a lot of wind or if it's super dry or what your soil is like you know something that's easy for somebody to grow you know in Hawaii would obviously be probably challenging for somebody in Arizona and other less obvious comparisons but um and then again it's just to be in front of the plants and really feel the sort of vibe and energy and watch their life cycle. It's just really hard to get all of that from a photo or a seed packet illustration. So, like I said, this is my ninth year really being passionate about gardening and I, I feel like I'm content now. I feel like I know what I need to have to be a happy girl in the garden and 
it's definitely this color combination the purples and then golden oranges and reds and yellows um, and some pink from the echinacea or from the coneflower some pink and purple but um, primarily for this back garden at least I don't know it's it's tricky and it's, it can be stressful too because you only have a small window to kind of get all this in for the season and then once you miss it that's it so ideally one day I'll get to a place where I can really enjoy it sit back and relax and just bask in the beauty and try to pick up on whatever subliminal messages these gorgeous plants are, are trying to express can you see the colors in here oh my goodness all right folks it's it's been a long one but i hope you got got something out of it again this is the aloha variety coneflower rudbeckia hybrid making my life better all right Happy, healthy gardening.